Mindy here and I wanted to create one video for all of you that have been following me with the study group that we've been doing, The Obesity Code. Um, if you've read this book, you know how life-changing the concepts are and what a different approach Dr. Fung offers on weight loss and the struggles many of you have had with kicking yourself out of insulin resistance and getting your body to burn fat again. So what I want to do today is really summarize the book for you because there are so many hidden gems in there. He packs it with research. So if you're a research fan and you want those studies, got to, got to read the book. The book is incredible. Um, but what I'm going to do today is really break it down for you. I think the most important thing that I learned in the book and the one that I have really seen work in my clinic is that weight loss is a two-step process. It's not a one-step process. And it doesn't mean that we are to work with our food and then go exercise. That's not the two steps. In fact, that's the two steps that Dr. Fung spends the first couple of sections really showing us why the eat less, move more uh, mentality to weight loss is not working. What he talks about in his book is that it, weight loss is actually a hormonal issue. And there's really only one hormone that you have to work on and that's insulin. So insulin resistance, weight loss resistance, whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna to have to balance insulin if you want to lose weight. So I'm a visual learner, I like to look at pictures, so I had one of my staff draw this out because I wanted you guys to see from a visual standpoint what's happening when you're eating too much sugar, when you're spiking insulin, and why it's causing you to, or, uh, yeah, contributing to your weight gain. So, first thing, when you eat, uh, when you're eating a, when normally, meaning a, not a lot of carbs, not a lot of protein, like a well-balanced meal, what ends up happening is that your, your blood sugar will raise, and as your blood sugar goes up, insulin will go with it. If you are not eating a high carb meal like a bowl of pasta, if you're having like a Cobb salad where you have some protein and some, uh, some uh, vegetables, it's a medium carb meal, then you will secrete a medium amount of insulin and that insulin will go into your cells and your body will use it for energy. But many of Americans, many of you who have been eating high carbohydrate meals for so long, have been eating meals that cause your blood sugar to go high and then your insulin goes high. And because your insulin goes high, what ends up happening is you flood that cell with insulin. And on the top part of the cell are these little receptor sites that invite the insulin in. But if you go and you flood all of the, your, your cell with insulin because your meal was so high in carbohydrates, then your body can only allow so much of that insulin to go into the cell. The extra insulin gets stored as fat. And this is why people gain weight. So you can eat, Dr. Fung points this out, you could have a bowl of cereal or you could have a, um, a low fat, low calorie cereal or you could have a bowl of broccoli and their calorie count might be the same, but their insulin count will not. So the bowl of low fat, non-sugary cereal may appear to be low in calories, but because it's spiking your insulin, you're flooding your cells and you're making yourself insulin resistant. So if you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna have to cut your carbs out, you're gonna have to cut your sugar out, you're gonna have to eat low carb. I know everybody, as a lot of you ask me, because I'm such a fan of keto, that they're like, oh, it's just another fad. It's not, I promise you, the keto's staying around for a long time because people are getting results. And what they're doing is that they're going back to this model where they're lowering insulin so that their cells can start to let it, hear it again and let it in. So, first step, you gotta lower carbs, you gotta lower sugar, uh, you even need to do what I, moderate protein. There was a lot of questions in my resetter group around protein, Fung talks about protein, Protein will also spike insulin, so you wanna do it in moderation. So that's the first step. Now, what Fung doesn't talk about and what we see in our clinic a lot is that these receptor sites can get blocked with other things, such as heavy metals. So lead, mercury being the biggest one, 
We've, done, we've run two, 300 by this point, heavy metal tests on people. Um, everybody's been high in lead. It's just been in varying degrees. Lead is in your water. Lead gets passed down through the generations. It's in your soils. If you're doing pesticide, filled food, you're not buying organic. All of these synthetic chemicals that we're surrounded by right now also clog these receptor sites. So a lot of times people will go low carb and they're like, oh my God, I, yeah, I've been, I'm just doing, you know, vegetables and moderate protein and a lot of fat and I'm not seeing any weight loss. Well, if that's you, you've got to start to go in and work on other chemicals that might be blocking the receptor sites and pull those out. And I'll, I'll talk about heavy metals at another point because it's also, heavy metal detoxing is another game changer that we see in our office. When we pull these out, the cells really can hear and people start to drop weight, okay? So, first couple of steps is you gotta lower down the foods that cause insulin. Now, I wanna show you something that Dr. Fung actually created. This is his picture. So, and I, I again, I'm a picture person, so I really like it um, to show how, the different steps that you need to take. So, fattening carbs are any carb that will spike insulin really, really high, okay? A good, a good way to go see what a, what a carb will do to your insulin intake is to look at something called the glycemic index. The glycemic, the higher the glycemic number, the more insulin that's gonna be secreted. Um, animal protein, so this is why paleo didn't work so well, is that everybody took their carbs out, but then they all went to this high animal protein, or Atkins. Well, too much animal protein will also spike insulin. And then here's the one that's getting so many of you guys and you're not even aware of it, is stress. If you're chronically stressed, you're eating keto, you're trying so hard to lose weight, stress will halt your weight loss efforts more than anything. We're gonna do next month, we're gonna do rushing woman syndrome. We're gonna look at that book and, and talk about what cortisol is doing to your hormones. Um, but I can tell you that, wow, it's destroying your insulin levels. You really got to have some tools. So make sure you have some tools for that. All of that will cause a, an increase in insulin. And then the insulin starts to be stored. Extra insulin gets stored as fat. Now, he brings up some interesting points in this summary. Really fascinating to me. Like, look at things like vinegar. And look at things like fiber. If you're eating a meal high in fiber, it actually has a protective effect where it will help lower insulin. If you're uh, vinegar, he talks about two tablespoons of vinegar before you go to bed or with a high carb meal, will start to lower it as well. So those were a couple of little key things that he put in the book. Um, but in order to stop storing fat, so those of you that are like, I am just getting fatter and fatter, I'm gaining more and more weight as the years go on, you gotta do this first step that I just discussed. Now, for many of you, you've already done the work, the hard work of getting the carbs out, um, and you're still not losing weight. And Fung really lays it out in the solution chapter that at that point, you really have to look at fasting, all types of fasting, and fasting all the time. Like, you can do uh, a 24-hour fast, you can intermittent fast, you can, you can do, um, partial uh, fast mimicking you can do water fast but you have to keep exercising your fasting muscle because when you bring that insulin down for a significant period of time what you tell your body is hey there's no blood sugar coming in we're not getting any spike in in blood sugar and we're not going to the pancreas is not going to secrete any insulin so you better go find that extra stuff that I stored 5 10 20 years ago and burn that for energy how cool is that? So what your body does because you're not eating is that insulin stays low and it goes looking for more insulin and sugar to burn for energy and you burn fat. So super cool. I, I, this is, we see in our clinic all the time, people dropping 60, 70 pounds. Uh, it's really, this is a pivotal book and a new paradigm in weight loss. If you're trying weight loss any other way, you're gonna just struggle. So I can't emphasize enough, Go, come on over to the Resetters. Well, I'm gonna actually put, uh, if you're not on my YouTube channel, I'm taking all of my, uh, all the videos I've done on this book and they're all on a playlist now on my YouTube channel. So go check that out. If you want in the Resetter group, just put Resetters, we'll invite you in. Um, and next month, 
We're gonna start studying this one, cortisol. We're gonna really start addressing how do we lower cortisol so we can help you with your insulin spikes just from stress alone, okay? If you love the book study, put it in there. Let me know how it worked for you. Uh, if you want in the resetters, just put resetters. But as always, I hope that helps.